Hello everyone, today we're going to be making Jack Scalfani's buttermilk salmon. So the first thing you're going to need is you're going to need a at least a pound of uh, boneless, skinless uh, salmon. I just picked up one of the frozen packets of Kita salmon, which is basically chum salmon. You're going to need buttermilk. I'd get like a quart of it, but you're going to use about two cups worth depending on how big your bowl is. I'm going to probably use most of this here. You're going to need a veg low sodium vegetable broth. You need some bay leaves, you're going to use two of them. You're going to need uh, two cloves of garlic, since I don't have any fresh garlic right now, I have to have a whole head. Uh, one medium sized shallot, one nice sized lemon, some fresh thyme, a little bit of Dijon mustard, and we're going to use some kosher salt. So the first thing we want to do is if you're using frozen salmon, the best way to get them thawed real quick is to put them in some warm water for a little while. If you have time to let them sit in the refrigerator, that's the best way to do it. But if you need to do it quick and you don't have much time, I would put them in some water and let them thaw that way. So we'll get these open real quick. This one. Whoop. There went all the juice all over my uh, Dijon mustard. Might just use two, but I'm going to open up the third one anyway. Just be careful with all the excess juice. Pat it just a little bit here and dry it off. Alright, so you're going to season both sides with a little bit of kosher salt. Just go light on it. Don't worry, I like salt, so we'll just flip it over and we'll put just a tiny bit here. All right, move this off to the side. We need to get our lemon and shallot and garlic cut up. Now for your lemon, you want them into four nice sized wedges. We'll cut the ends off, because I don't want these. Just cut it in half, cut it in half again. And these are the wedges that you're gonna want. These are the size wedges that you want for your uh, lemons. So next we'll do the uh, shallots. Now we're gonna go to the video for how to cut this up, but obviously this is it's an onion, but it's not an onion at the same time. So let's go to the video. Big ups Montana banana for the video. All right, get out two cloves of garlic from your garlic, peel it off really nice, and then you're just going to lightly crush it. You don't have to crush it too hard. And this is what we're going to use for our recipe. And then, now that we got all this crap, we want to get like five or six sprigs of thyme. So I'm going to use a little bit more than that, though. We're going to go wash this off. Probably get like this, should be good. Now like I said in all my videos, if you want to use soap on your thyme, you are more than welcome to. It's not necessary though. I just want to rinse it off just a little bit here. Back over. And that's it for our uh, what we need. All right, next thing you want to do is get your pot on the stove and shake up your uh, buttermilk really good. Hopefully my whole camera's not shaking. There we go. Start this off on medium heat. And we want to get this up into a simmer. Just pour in. Now you can do about two cups worth, but like I said, I'm probably going to do a majority of this pan. Actually, I'm just going to do the whole thing. So we'll let this get up to a simmer and we'll come right back. So I forgot, it hasn't been too long, but you also want to add in your vegetable broth. You want to do about a cup of this to two cups of your uh, uh, buttermilk. A more. This should be good. Pour this right in here. 
There we go. Now we're looking good. Now you want to use a slotted spoon for this. I'm not going to touch the bottom with this. I just want to mix it real quick. We'll just get it to come up to a simmer. See, I actually picked the appropriate spoon this time. I don't want to have metal do metal. Now what we're looking for is obviously when it comes up to a simmer from the medium heat, I'm going to turn it to low and it should start to curdle a little bit more than it already is. And then we're going to add in our uh, uh, vet, the shallot, the lemon, and all the seasonings in there. And then we will add the fish after it simmers a little bit longer. Alright, see it's starting to curdle real good now. It's nice and hot, so we're going to turn this down to low. This should be good. And then we're going to put in all of our seasonings. Add two bay leaves on your plate as well. I'm just going to throw all that shit right in there. give this a little stir here and we're just gonna let this soak in the juices for about another minute or so and then we will uh, put our salmon inside of it all right it's been about another minute or so the juice is kind of getting in get yourself a pair of tongs we're gonna put our uh, salmon right inside now don't worry if it doesn't get covered in your uh, pot we're gonna flip them over uh, later anyway. So put these right in here. And we're going to cover, cook it for about 10, 11 to 12 minutes until it's nice and uh, pale and opaque. So we'll come back when that's looking. Looking good anyway. Alright, so our salmon's done. We're going to take a look at it. Definitely looks opaque. Just be careful when you take it out that it, uh, ah, just take it out so it doesn't fall apart on you. And if you get a little bit of the onion and crap out of it, you can just push, put it right back in. Take out that little sprig of time there. And this is what it looks like. Now, we're going to take this off the heat. Yeah, we're gonna let it sit for about five more minutes with the lid on and then we'll come right back we're gonna do something else with this and here's what our uh, buttermilk salmon looks like right now now Jag I'm gonna be honest this looks kind of like shit right now uh, in his video he wasn't even really enthused about this but in the end he said it was really good obviously the video quality of his kind of tells you he wasn't really enthused while he was making it he really didn't do anything spectacular. He didn't even chop, show Tammy cutting up the uh, any of the vegetables while he was doing it. But it was kind of. But he said at the end it was ridic It was pretty good. But I don't know why the hell you would make something if you weren't, uh, if you didn't really want it. I mean, all the crap I make, even if I know it's going to be shit some of the time, I still want to try it. All right, so it's been five minutes of sitting covered. We're gonna strain it out real quick. We don't want the uh, garnishes in there. So we're gonna strain it out and then we're gonna put it right back into the uh, the pot here. We're gonna put it back on the stove. I don't know, do I want the curdled crap? Probably not. We'll put the strain liquid back in there. Take this over the sink. So it's out of my fucking way for a minute. Alright, we're gonna put this right back in the pot. It's a little hot, so just be careful. We're gonna put it back over medium heat. And we are going to add about a, it says a teaspoon of Dijon mustard, but I've seen him put quite a bit in here. So I'm gonna put quite a bit in myself. See how it comes out. If I can get my goddamn thing of mustard to work. There we go. That might be a tablespoon, about anyway. Stir it up a little bit here. Mm. 
Now what we want to do is bring this up to a simmer again and cook until the poaching liquid is milky and reduced by half, about 9 to 11 minutes. And then we're going to strain it again. So we'll let this go and we'll watch it. Alright, we got it bubbling pretty good, so we're going to turn it on low here and simmer it. Put the lid and we're going to simmer it for about another uh, 9 to 11 minutes. So we'll do, we'll do 10. We've got 10 minutes here. Alright, it's been about the time this has been simmering. Put this off the side here. Just give it one last stir. And then we want to strain this liquid one more time through a strainer, which I have behind me. Here. And we're going to take this and we're going to spoon it over our salmon. And that's it. As I eat this more and more, I start to hate it even more and more. I, it looks unappealing. It just tastes like lemon, and I would rather have other spices on it. And it the buttermilk really isn't that good with it. I I do not like this. Honestly, I wouldn't even recommend this. I, I take back what I said. Like I said, as I've eaten more and more of it, I'm starting to hate it. And I love salmon, too. So that's, that's kind of sad to me. Anyway, thanks for watching. All right, now while we're waiting for that salmon to cook up, we're going to do one other thing. We're going to make some buttermilk fried chicken, too. Now we're going to use... Instead of uh, using uh, like wings or anything, I'm going to use chicken breast. So I picked up some chicken breast from the store, about two and a half pounds worth. Uh, put a little bit of thyme, black pepper, uh, garlic powder, and onion powder inside of this and let it marinate. It's been marinating about six hours or so. If you marinate this overnight in the fridge, it should be really good. Get yourself some flour, some eggs, and we're going to use some more garlic powder, thyme, onion powder, Montreal steak seasoning, and a little bit of paprika to flavor up our uh, flour here. Now, I love Montreal steak seasoning, but you can pretty much use whatever you want with this. If you want to make it more southern fried, you can use uh, cayenne pepper and whatnot, but I like to do it like this. But I got my deep fryer on behind me at what? 350 or 375? I put it on 350. I want it up to 375. Go a little bit longer while I'm doing this. We'll season up our flour a little bit here. Stir this right into our flour. Crack my eggs open inside of here. Probably got an eggshell or something in there, but I'm not worried. I need something to mix that up with. Uh, hang on, let me get a whisk. Got a whisk and a new uh, glove. Whisk these eggs up really good. 
I like to do mine in an egg wash bath. You can obviously get away without doing it in an egg wash bath and just flour it, but I like it this way. Makes it a little nicer in my opinion. Put that on top of here. Flour up one of our chicken breasts. Now, I just got regular uh, skinless uh, with rib meat chicken. You can obviously get uh, the skinned kind. You can get regular kind of chicken as you want to, but some people don't like bone in chicken. Let's flour right over this. She drained off really good. Let me go find a plate or something for this. Don't have one. There we go. I got myself a plate. Should work good. Just repeat for all of them. Toss in the flour first. Get it nice and coated really good. Put it in the egg wash bath. And toss it back in the flour. Do this until all of them are done. All right, now we'll put them down. I'm just gonna do a couple of them for now. And we'll let them cook for a little while and we'll see how they come out. It's only been a couple minutes so far, but let's take a look at our chicken. Oh yeah, that's looking pretty good so far. Mm. Can't go wrong with fried chicken. Here's how our uh, chicken's looking it's still looking really nice test one here in just a few minutes all right these should be about ready now my problem here is uh they stuck a little bit to my uh deep fryer baskets so i'll fuck with that here shortly but i opened up one and it looks pretty good on the inside there see i think it looks pretty good all right, here's everything. Here's his buttermilk chicken or uh, salmon with the one lemon wedge, which I'm pretty interested in. I actually have a fork here. I don't know why I have the spoon sitting there. And then here's my uh, chicken. Obviously, I've been eating at it already. And I think it's, I think it's pretty good. Obviously, I know what I did to make it stick to the oven, but I think it's uh, pretty juicy. The seasoning on the uh, flour is nice. No, no, I like this. I have some big pieces I got to take care of here in a minute. I'm actually going to try a little bit in this butter sauce. It's good. Alright, now the one thing I really want to try was all the salmon. Let's take a look here. doesn't look too bad it's not at least cooked white on the inside it looks the outside of it obviously looks like shit but it's not about the looks I would probably put some like thyme or some herbs on it at the ends let's take a look wow salmon's nice and moist you get the lemon flavor in it. I don't really taste the buttermilk as much. I'm gonna have to uh, dip a piece inside. Dip a piece inside of the buttermilk stuff. Yeah, I think I think that's actually pretty good. I mostly taste the lemon flavor from it, though. I don't taste much of the buttermilk. But it poached out pretty nice for me anyway. So yeah, I would recommend this. Good job, Jack. I'm impressed. I, I would obviously make it a little more colorful, but hey, it's not bad. 